Thank you, Roscoe, and welcome, everyone, and good evening. In 2006, in the wake of the Sean Bell shooting, Dr. Fred Newman and I founded Operation Conversation Cops and Kids. We decided to try to impact on the culture of mistrust between young people in our communities and the officers who police those communities by using the all-stars method of play, pretending, and performance to help cops and kids see each other and relate to each other in new ways. Since then, I have led 60 workshops involving 894 youth and 668 officers at police, athletic leagues, and community centers in all five boroughs. I am very proud to announce that six months ago, the All-Stars and the NYPD signed a partnership agreement to make Operation Conversation a part of the training of New York City police officers. Here's a short clip of Philip Banks, Chief of Community Affairs of the NYPD, who was here earlier, speaking about Operation Conversation Cops and Kids. Good afternoon, and uh, thank you very much. Um, it's my pleasure to have been invited to speak. I asked Dr. Filani, uh, uh, how long do I have to speak? And she says, uh, you can speak for as long as you want, but we're only listening for two minutes. <laughs> so uh, two minutes can't adequately describe how I feel about operation conversation, but I can sum it up. It works. I stay very much abreast of the training in the New York City Police Department, and I can say now that this training is as valuable to those particular police officers as any training that they receive. I certainly have to certainly thank and take my hat off to Dr. Filani and her organization because there are so many leaders in this particular city who can say it makes it, we, we need to make a change, but there are not many who actually show the way. And they certainly show the way, and I certainly want to pledge my support to something that's very effective, it works, and I'm happy and honored to be a part of it. Thank you very much. Although police officers and young people walk the same streets, in some ways they live in very different worlds. The cops are in the community to fight crime, to intervene on violence, and to protect our lives. The kids who live in these communities often feel trapped. They walk around every day in fear of, on the one hand, being shot by the kid from the next block, and on the other hand, ending up in jail or worse, because they've gotten into some escalating situation with the police officer. In these two different worlds, the young people often see the cops as a hostile occupying force, and the police officers see the kids as disrespectful, angry, and potentially violent. Both sides are mistrustful and suspicious. A moment ago, you heard Chief Banks say that this is a very unusual program, and it works. Let me tell you why it works. Operation Conversation works because we use pretending performance and improvisation, not lectures, to break down the walls separating their experiences and perceptions. We help them to perform together, and when they start playing new roles, a character other than themselves, it's amazing how quickly everyone is smiling and laughing. I found that even the most sullen kids and the most reserved police officers become hams in two minutes. We play theater games and improvise for about an hour, and then we get to talking. It's hard for me to express to you the kinds of things that happen in this environment because they are both ordinary and extraordinary. I remember once a Dominican cop from Washington Heights and a Dominican kid from Mott Haven Projects 
immediately suspicious of each other, finding a way to talk about the fact that both of their fathers abandoned their families when they were little kids, and to actually share the pain and shame of that with each other and with the group. When I asked the cops and kids to talk about what's the hardest thing in their lives, the young people are often surprised and touched when the cops say that it's really difficult to not be with their families on holidays, for example, to have missed the last four Thanksgiving dinners because they had to work. The young men also share how every morning on their way to the subway to go to school, they are afraid of being shot by a local gang member or hassled by the police. And the police officers live with the knowledge that violence against them can flare up at any moment. One young police officer talked about how he calls his mom every morning before he goes to work to tell her he loves her in case he doesn't come home alive that night. This prompted a young man from the community to share that he, for the same reason, never picks a fight with his mom when he's leaving the house because he doesn't know if he's coming back. So play and performance allow the cops and the kids to relate to each other, often for the very first time, not as enemies, but as fellow human beings. Eventually, the program came to the attention of New York's top cop, Police Commissioner Ray Kelly, who understood the creativity and impact of our approach. I've had the honor and privilege of getting to know Commissioner Kelly as we've developed Operation Conversation, and I have the deepest respect for his willingness to go to bat for his own officers and for poor kids all across this city. We are honored that he is our guest tonight. Please join me in a big round of applause for our police commissioner, Ray Kelly.